Greetings, this is Fallen Hot, and welcome to my Game of the Year 2017 video. Happy New Year, by the way. I know this is late. I usually get this up at Christmas or Christmas Eve, but I've left it a little bit later this time because, quite frankly, I've not really been able to figure out how the hell I'm going to do this. Why? I've not played five games this year. I've just not. I've, I've Well, I've not finished five games this year, especially not five games that came out this year. I finished free. Two of which are incredibly flawed, whilst being very good, they're also incredibly flawed and there's no way I could put them as a game of the year. And the other one, whilst I really enjoyed it, I already forgot about it. I don't really remember much about it at all. It is a very good but very forgettable game. So let's talk about those right away. This is going to make me some... This is going to upset people, but... Yeah, so pretty much I'm going to do this differently this year. I'm going to have a single game of the year, and... I, well, I'm going to have two game of the years. I'm going to have one that follows the rules and one that doesn't follow the rules. So, here we go. Um, so, Mario Odyssey. This is the game I keep forgetting about. It's, it's a very good game. That's it. Like, it's fresh for a Mario game. It feels new, and it's very fun to play. But once I finished it and put it down, I, I if I, the only thing I remember is a few scenes and then controlling a dinosaur. Like that, <laughs> that was it is a good game. And it that's it. There's nothing I can really gush about. There's nothing that really sticks in my head. There's nothing that there's no reason for me to come back to this at any point. It's it's just a solid, well-built good game. Uh, and there's that's it. Um, I keep forgetting about its existence, and I can't put a I can't have a game of the year that I keep forgetting about. So there's that. Moving on to another Switch game. This is one of the ones I finished. Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. I have never been a Legend of Zelda fan. Um, I've tried them all. Well, I've tried most of them, and I've never liked them. I've always got really bored, with the exception of Wind Waker HD in the Wii U. That game was really fucking fun. The reason for that is the exploration. You go out, you look around, you find shit, and it's, it's just fun. Now, I thought I'd get into this one. And I did. Breath of the Wild was a really, really freaking good game. Uh, it's an open world game. You run out, you explore, you mess around with physics. It's it's a game that you lose countless hours to. But it also has a lot of flaws. This is, as TB says, like Skyrim, a large game with the depth of a puddling pool. There is, there is not much in it. Eventually you realize that there really isn't much to this. There's a bunch of boring, repetitive dungeons that get tiring really quickly. Uh, and then there's the fucking rain, which completely stops all game playing. There's nothing you can do when it rains. And it's it's just... A lot of people moaned about the, the weapons breaking. That only bothered me with the weapons that... um. That only really bothered me with the weapons that you gave, that were given to you that were from your old friends. It's like, ah, great hero, thank you for saving our village. Here is a weapon once held by one of the great heroes. It is truly a priceless artifact. By the way, if you break it, just bring me a few gems and a regular pole arm and I'll make you a new one. What? It's like, that made, that, that, that irritated the piss out of me. It's like, yes, here is a priceless work of art, a one-of-a-kind artifact of ages long past. But if you ruin it, I'll make you another one. That that was... They really should have treated those weapons kind of like they treated the Master Sword. They put them on a charger that recharges. Do that because the idea of breaking weapons once held by great heroes in a matter of seconds after one fucking fight. Yeah, fuck that. I never used them. I just shoved them on display in my house. When I'm actively not using things because I don't want them to break, that's a bad design. Um, however, the upper weapons didn't really bother me. What did bother me in this game was the rain. When it rains in this game, you stop playing. There's nothing you can do. You teleport out, you come back when it's not raining. You can build a camp if you can find somewhere that's dry and wait it out. Uh, but you can't climb, and if you've got any metal on you whatsoever, you're going to get electrocuted. It's really fucking irritating. Um, I hate the rain. In this game, the rain is cancer. I, I, I despise it, but it's... I had a lot of fun. It, it's a lot like Skyrim in that I had a lot of fun playing it and I get completely absorbed in it. But when you sit down and think of it, you realize that actually it's 
it's not great. It's fun in the moment, but it's not great, and eventually becomes very boring. Um, Legend of Zelda, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a weird like middle place. There are some people that really love this. They think it's a fantastic experience, and there's some people that hate it because they're bogged down by all the mechanics and the fact that it's just another open world sandbox game. I'm in between the two of them. I'm not really quite. I sometimes I lean in that direction, sometimes I lean in that direction. But I couldn't make it my game in a year. Um, it's I know it's very popular, but I couldn't make it my game in a year. I think this is a game that's going to be. Um, this is going to end up like Skyrim. This is a game that everybody fucking loves, and then over time, people are going to notice more and more flaws about it, and then people are. It's going to start to be fashionable to hate on it. Moving on, another game that I finished. Persona 5. I love Shin Megami Tensei. I love the Persona series. Let's take it out. The, 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 can you see it better? No, whatever. Um, I love the Persona series. But this game... By the fourth? No, the third dungeon, I was sick of them. Um, it says a lot when the RPG element of this game... You're rushing past as much as quickly as possible. At one point, I found a, a, a an exploit a exploit that you could do to kill the secret boss, the Reaper, really easily. Like in one round, it would instantly die, and you gain the experience. Well, I over leveled. I farmed for about two hours, and I got completely over leveled, so I could just one shot all the enemies and had never never had to worry about like combat or anything like that. Why? Because the dungeons became unbelievably boring. They were a chore that I had to get past in order to enjoy the game. I find myself really fucking loving the life sim elements of this game and the um the companion, well not the companion, but the the character kind of the arcana or whatever they call it in this one. Um the the characters that you bond with and their their quest lines. I found that really freaking engaging. I loved it so much. But the RPG elements of it just bought the shit out of me. I don't know whether I'm becoming a different gamer over the years, but I found myself just really wanting this game to end. Um I was really enjoying the dialogue. I was really enjoying those quest lines and then boom, a dungeon would pop up. And I'd have to go through that and it'd be a slog and it'd be so boring and repetitive and eventually get past it. And I'd get past it in as few runs as possible. So then I could get back to the life sim and the character quest lines and all that kind of things and really get into that and really enjoy that and then boom, another dungeon would pop up. I'm like, oh god, the game stopped. The fun bit stopped and I'm going to have to slog all the way through this. It was a grind. And the game outstays its welcome. It is so fucking long. Um, there, there's maybe about eight dungeons in the game or something like that. And I was I was tired of it by the third one. I was just done with it. Um, but I kept going through it because I was really interested in the story. I really liked the characters. I just wanted to see it through. And I was not disappointed. The ending is really goddamn satisfying, at least the one I got. Um, everything about the story and the characters, with the exception of Morgana, who can go and fuck himself, the selfish little prick of a cat he is. No, I'm, I'm going to go on a tangent on this one. Morgana, at one point in the goddamn story, throws a fit because he's no, no longer as important. This cat has spent the entire goddamn game shitting all over Ryuji. One of the one of the other characters. I think that's his name anyway. I've, I've been a while since played. Um, he spends the entire game shitting over him every single possible chance he gets. The girls, he swoons over. He praises them for every little... You can breathe. You're so incredible, Lady Anne. Fuck off, Morgana. I hate him. He's a little shithead. He's so fucking selfish, he's so self-important, and he's completely fucking useless. The only reason I ever kept him around is because he's a healer. If, if he wasn't a healer, he would have been axed. He was so annoying. I hated him so much. He was a selfish little prick that constantly shat all over one of the characters, but when it happened to him, he couldn't take it. He just ran away. Lives were on the line, and he just ran away. Oh, I hated him. And then I had to feign interest in, like, my character... I had, oh, The only options I get was, Oh, no, Morgana's gone. We have to save him. No, let the fucker die. I don't give a shit about him. He was a prick. I hated that cat so much. 
No, not because he told me to sleep. That was annoying. But because he was a selfish little prick. <laughs> I hated that cat so much. Rent over. But this is a really good game. It really is. And I'm sure if you get in... If I could have got into the dungeon elements of this game, this would have been my game of the year. Um, it is the closest one to game of the year that, that of the games I played this year and actually finished. In fact, if I had to choose games that came out this year that I actually finished, that would be my game of the year. It would be this, despite the fact that the dungeons became super boring. I have really good memories already of this game. Just remembering the story and the characters as I'm talking about this, I fucking... It was a fantastic experience. It was one of the best RPGs I've played. Except the fact that the dungeons got really boring really fucking quickly. So... And it did outstay its welcome. It was too long. Um, I just, I was, again, I don't know whether I'm changing as a gamer over the years. Uh, maybe RPGs aren't my thing anymore. Maybe I prefer more story-focused games like Life is Strange. Incidentally, I've not played the new one of those this year, so I can't count that. But, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh... It's a mixed bag. It's heavily flawed, but also very, very good. There we go. Um... Now we're getting to games that I actually didn't finish. Neo. This is the best Dark Souls clone you will ever play. At least until they bring out a better one. Neo is really good. Like, if you like Dark Souls, you will like this. From the very introduction, the very first opening screen is a copy and paste scene from Dark Souls Prefer to Die. How that game opens, the way the camera moves, the way the camera is sat, everything about that opening is how this game opens. From the very beginning, it lets you know this is a game inspired by Dark Souls. And it truly is a game inspired by Dark Souls. Don't let the intro fool you. This is not a clone. This does its own thing, and it does it really fucking well. Again, this would have been on my top five of the year if I had actually finished it, but I didn't. I got up to a certain boss. I got frustrated. I couldn't beat it. I ended up putting the game down and playing Dark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> um... This was probably, like, that being said, the original Dark Souls wasn't on my game of the year either. In fact, I hated the original Dark Souls. It took Dark Souls 2 for me to actually get into the game and understand how it works and get better at it. I get good, or got better at least. I, I don't think I'm good at Dark Souls. At which point I went back to Prepare to Die, actually managed to get past Mo and Ornstein, and now it's one of my favourite games of all time. So chances are, in the future, I will go back to this and I will complete it. And I will regret not putting it on my top five of the year um, in 2017 because I've got nothing bad to say about this game. Um, the only reason I stopped playing it was because I got frustrated. My own lack of skill is the reason why I didn't complete this. But it is really good. The combat system is fantastic. I love it's it at the how it's based on Oni and and freaking uh, what uh, freaking yokai and all kinds of these folklore and mythological creatures. It's it's really well done. Uh, it's really interesting. The bios of the, all these different creatures are interesting if you're interested in that kind of thing. The combat is fantastic. The fact that if you swap weapons, your combat system completely changes. You've got a level up system with combats. There's ninja skills. There's like Tao magic skills. There's all kinds of different things. It's more of an RPG than Dark Souls in some ways um, and it's it's just really good like Nio, Neo, however the hell you're supposed to pronounce this is fan-fucking-tastic I cannot recommend this game enough but I never finished it I ended up playing Dark Souls instead <laughs> because I'm better at that game than I am at this that's pretty much all it was I could actually finish that and this was my own frustration that stopped me playing that Another game that came out this year, I don't have it with me right now because it's, a friend of mine has it, is, um, uh, what you call it? The one with the redhead archer. I've forgotten what it's called. Um, it, there's a robot dinosaurs and there's a redhead archer. I forget what it's called. The only thing I liked about that game was the main character. Alloy, her name is. Um, she was cool. Like, her whole, her, she was like the first 
character in an Ubisoft game, I think it was. She was the first main character in an Ubisoft kind of open world survival game that actually had any character whatsoever. Freaking Aloy is awesome. I love her. She's one of my favorite um, game characters from Ubisoft. Like, she's the only main character that you play from Ubisoft um, from their open world survival games. That's actually fucking good. Is it Ubisoft or is it Activision? I don't know. I get them all confused all the time. Open worlds, climb towers, whatever. Um, I forget what it's called. I can't remember what it's called. I'm looking at this. I've got like a statue. I got the special edition because I thought she was so cool looking. I've got her standing on one of the robot raptors over there. I forget what it's called, but the main character was called Ally. She was a redhead archer. There was robotic dinosaurs running around. The character is really cool. The game is shit. <laughs> the game is so shit. Uh, I tried playing it and I felt no sense of progression. In fact, at one point I actually I opened up the difficulty because I was getting my ass handed to me re fucking repeatedly. And I opened up the difficulty and it was on the hardest goddamn fucking difficulty. I'm like, no wonder every single goddamn mob I run into is a fucking mini boss. Um, I guess the game implements some kind of thing where depending on how well you do, it changes the difficulty. So I put it on normal as I usually do from the start. And apparently I did really well at the, something at the start and it put it onto whatever the fucking hardest difficulty is. It was retarded. I hate that shit. Let me play them when I play it. If it's, if, if, I, if, I, if it's too hard for me or if it's too easy for me, I will decide that. Fuck you, don't do that. Um, but the main issue I don't, the main thing I don't like about it is I, I, there was no progression. You progressively faced tougher and tougher and tougher creatures, but you really got none of the weapons you got were any better. None of the not armor you got was any better. There's like end game stuff that you can get that makes you invulnerable essentially and is really overpowered. But before that, nothing you really get is really better. So you start off pretty much in exactly the same place as you end. Which means these tougher and tougher enemies just get tougher and tougher and tougher. And the only way to beat them is for your own personal skill to get better at it. And that's all fine and dandy, but in these other games, you're constantly upgrade, up locking, unlocking more weapons. You're constantly getting better skills, and there's similar things in that. But I did have a sense of increased power in those other games. Far Cry 3, for example, I went through the entire game using nothing but the bow, because I loved the bow. I purposely nerfed myself, I purposely gave myself a, a freaking challenge by doing that. Occasionally I'd swap out to the flamethrower because it was hilarious. But beyond that, I just used the freaking bow and arrow, which meant killing some enemies. Uh, especially the heavy set ones early on was really fucking hard, but I did it because that's what I enjoyed. I love bows. Um, but in this game, there's there's the bow and the, the polearm thing, and it's just, there's no sense of progression. It's a big open world game where nothing you do really feels like it's getting you anything. You, you don't feel like you're getting more power. You don't feel like you're improving in any way. And I really didn't feel like it was improving. A few hours in and it was exactly like I was at the start of the thing with maybe one or two more skills. I could ride dinosaurs now. Woo. Like, that was it. Um, so I ended up stopping really early on. I thought this is boring as shit. Now a friend of mine has it and is borrowing it. Um, so, <laughs> and then, finally, Monster Hunter Stories. I never finished this game. Um, the reason why I didn't finish it is because as I got it, a new patch in World of Warcraft came out. And I became so absorbed in that. But I will, we're, we're getting to the point in WoW now where we're going to the, the downtime before the new expansion comes out. So that'll be a perfect time to play it. But... Monster Hunter Stories might just be my game of the year, despite the fact that I've never finished it, <clears throat> because I have been watching a Let's Play of it. I know what's coming, uh, for the most part. There's some things I've avoided. I've avoided a lot of the end game stuff, but I have watched a little bit of content. And it's, it's how do I explain? Basically, it's Monster Hunter, so of course I'm gonna like it. But there's more than that. There's it's 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 nice to see that. Okay, let me let me grab on my thoughts. There's a few elements to this for me. First of all, it's Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter is my favorite game series of all time. Every single Monster Hunter game I've ever played, even the spin-offs, I have adored. The problem is, we don't really get 
spin-offs here. Uh, Pokipori Farm, for example, or Village, or whatever it's called. We never really got. Uh, if you ever played Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, uh, or Generations, I forget which one had it, but there was a mini, but there was a mini game with the Palicos, the feline followers, where you would send them out, and there'd be a rock paper scissors kind of mechanic, and they'd there'd be like these cartoony kind of you know stick figure, I don't know what paper kind of characters, and they'd fight over paper characters. And they'd beat them, and then they'd get resources, and they'd cheer, and they'd move on. Well, that was Poke Party Village, or whatever it's called. A game I would have, a game featuring feline farmers and hunters. I would have loved to play, but it never came out over here. And we've got this random fucking um, game, this spin-off based on a Monster Hunter anime that I didn't even know existed. That I don't even know whether it's over here or not, but. Monster Hunter Stories is, um... I've not got the, the cover on me, because I can't for, for the life of me remember where it is. But I do have a uh, amiibo that I imported. Um, here's the kind of jerk character with his raffi raffian. Uh, and then there's the main character, the boy version, uh, with a raffalus. Uh, some of the best amiibo I've seen, by the way, but... The basic idea is it's Monster Hunter. But instead of killing monsters, you befriend them. Uh, you befriend them, you ride on their back into combat, and most of the, or most if not all of the big favorites come, including some of the new ones like the spider creature, Narcella, or whatever it's called. Um, and it's just really cool seeing like these cutesy versions of these big bad monsters that you love fighting. And there's an element of Pokemon too with the Monster Hunter collection, but it reminds me more of Monster Rancher. So the basic idea is you start off here, this little kid, uh, we find an egg. This egg is a Raffalus, it hatches, a Naga Cougar attacks the village. You're like, oh shit, that this little Raffalus gets kicked off the edge and you don't see him until a little later on in the game. Um, you become a rider or whatever the fuck they call them. The basic idea is you have this gift, you have this ability in order to communicate with monsters, you have a bond with creatures. You can hatch them from an egg and you can raise them and they can become your friends and allies in battle. Uh, there's a rock, paper, scissors, turn-based sort of fighting mechanic to it and it's just really enjoyable. You go out, you it's still got that monster hunter element to it, you go out, you take on monsters with your monster they call them monsties, like besties, these monster companions. You get resources from the monsters you defeat, you use them to make better armor and weapons um, made from the parts of the monsters, uh, including, I think, upgrades for your... No, no, I was going to say upgrades for... Uh, you can get the cat follower, some, like, cosmetic stuff, but yeah. And it's just to continue on from that, and you go from area to area area based on the different villages in the Monster Hunter series and a few new ones. Um, desert zones, freaking ice zones, jungle zones, misty zones, water zones, that kind of thing. And you take on bigger and bigger monsters, you level up, you you get better creatures to fight by your side, you can breed them, so they mix different skills together. There's the monster hunter, the, sorry, there's the monster rancher element to it. It's very simple, but there's a lot to it. Uh, and I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, and I will be finishing it this year, most likely, during the downtime of WoW. But, speaking of WoW, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't play many games this year because... Well, to be honest, there weren't that many games that came out this year that really interested me. I got the odd spin-off, the odd, like, extra one, like, this one here, World of Final Fantasy. Um, speaking of monsters, it's a turn-based kind of monster-collecting version of Final Fantasy. It's kind of like Dragon's Quest Monsters, where you collect these cutesy little monster creatures and use them in combat. Um, similar kind of premise. I'm a big fan of the monster collector genre. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei does it. Pokemon, uh, Dragon Quest Monsters. You know, there's there's a, there's a lot of games out there like that, but I can't remember their... There's another one as well. Freaking, um... Yokai Watch. Yokai Watch is pretty fun. Not amazing, but it's, it's pretty fun. Too RNG for my taste. But, wow. I have been playing WoW pretty much all year. And if I'm going to, um, be perfectly honest with you guys... That's probably my game of the year. Um, Legion has been the best expansion, in my opinion, since Wrath. Uh, 
Now, keep in mind that I'm someone that never really played vanilla, um, and I joined Burning Crusade really late on. So by the time I hit max level, Wrath of the Lich King was out. And Wrath was the bulk of my gameplay. Um, I never really raided that much. I raided Ice Crown Citadel with a bunch of random people that had no idea what the fuck they were doing. And it took us a long time to get through it, but we eventually did. It was basically LFR. Um, LFR wasn't a thing back then, but you, f you see the way LFR is now? That was kind of my raid group uh, going through Wrath of the Lich King. We were like that. But uh, I came back with Warlords of Draenor. And I fell in love with the game all over again. I got, an, I got in a guild called Knights of Justice. There was a bunch of new players. There were some old players. A very casual guild. I ended up getting an officer rank because I was on pretty much all the goddamn time. And I was willing to help out people whenever they wanted. I was a nice guy, essentially. So I ended up getting an officer rank. Um, and it was a lot of fun. They were good guys. We went after mount achievements together. I got, like, the Cataclysm mount achievement with them, the Pandaria mount achievements with them. Um, we did a lot of, like, casual stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. I didn't really raid Hellfire. Um, I did it right at the end of the expansion in a random kind of group together to get the moose. And that was it. Um, but I didn't really raid. I just did LFR. So... And keep in mind that the game has changed a tremendous de deal from Wrath of the Lich King to Legion. Legion comes out. My guild hasn't returned. Um, Tanan Jungle, when that came out, they all gave up. They stopped playing. They just didn't care anymore. Uh, there, was, there was like me and one hunter guy who eventually stopped playing because he was focusing on education. It was a few years younger than me. So it ended up just being me. And I thought, fuck, I'm going to have to find a guild, because I want to enjoy this game with people. So I look around, I put in one or two applications, um, but the one that I ended up getting into was because I made a f post on the forums. And that guild was moving to Mongolia. And these guys are assholes. But they're lovable assholes. Um, they're a great bunch of guys. And they taught me how to play the game, quite frankly. Um, they... Uh, I started um, using more keybinds. I'd already started that. I already started using LVI and, you know, making my own UI and using a few keybinds. But because of them, I started to use more keybinds. Um, they, one of the guys taught me, like, tried to figure out what I was doing wrong with my hunter or how I would improve. Uh, he taught me, he basically taught me line of sight bullshit in PvP. He was, um... The guy that's like, remove, uh, move backwards from your keyboard and just have strafe. R stop using that. My movement improved. Um, and as I've been playing, basically Emerald Nightmare was the first time I ever legitimately raided. And I was nervous as fuck. I studied those tactics like you wouldn't believe. Normal, heroic. I, I, I studied them like you wouldn't believe. I watched the Fat Boss videos over and over and over and over again. I read the tactics over and over again. I made notes. We got in there. I was one of about three people in the entire fucking raid team that actually did that shit. We used Burr tactics. We, we went in there, we killed it, we hit shit till it died. That was, and if we, that failed, then we'd think about tactics. I was worrying over nothing. Um, and for, uh, for all the time playing these guys, there's been a lot of funny moments. Uh, I'm a bit of a derp. Uh, there was one time during the, uh, thing of Halls of Valor, Trials of Valor, whatever the raid is, we're facing Odin. Then there's a video on this on my YouTube channel. Um, biggest Huntard moment, I think it's called, or something like that. I'm, I have one of the ads on me. I'm in a little circle, you have to kill it in. I attack it, attack it, attack it. It's, it's got like one hit point left. I've, I've put crows on it. I'm like, okay, if I move out now, I can, I can, I, I've, that's basically dead. I can move out now. I can do something else. It's not dead. It, um, it followed me out of the protective circle and I didn't notice. There's this big Raikul following me and I didn't notice. And then Phil goes, why the fuck is there a mob in the middle of the fight? And it wipes us. And I had a moment after there. I legitimately got, like, really emotional. 
And I left I left the group and I'm like, guys, I, I can't I'm I'm just a hindrance to you guys. I just can't do it. We laugh about it now, but at the time it really hit me. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> um And then one of the guys like the same guy that was helped me out with all the other stuff, like, come on, we're gonna go to Ironforge, we're gonna help you out with rotation, we're gonna see what you're doing, we're gonna help you improve. And just playing with these guys in general. Um I've improved at the game a lot. Uh, the joke is that when I joined them, I was god-awful, and now I'm just bad. <laughs> so maybe in a few years, I'll upgrade to, eh. <laughs> um, but they're a great bunch of guys. They really are. Uh, they are fucking assholes that I want to choke a lot of the time, but they're also a great bunch of guys. Drama happens at one point, and we move servers. Um... And it ended up being, I believe it was me uh, and two other people, eventually, because the others stopped playing. And we put together a guild, or rather they put together the guild, I was just there. Um, and the guild was called Burly Functional. It's probably one of the... Our old guild master had this thing with burrs. Um, his name is Burr. He is a burr. He is from Burdonia. His currency is salmon, and you get the idea. The guy was a blast to play with. Um, he's such a derp. He's such a dork, but he's a blast to play with. Um, well, we named the guild in his honor, Burly Functional, which is not only accurate, but funny, or punny. And I think it's probably one of the best guild names I've ever heard in my life. It's the kind of thing that if Burly Functional is no longer a thing... I'm using Burly Functional in other games. Like, if I ever may have to make a group in a video game, I'm calling it Burly Functional. It's going to be a thing for me from now on. I'm, I'm not letting that one go. It's so good. And we're on Kazakh EU. We are Horde side, obviously. And I have recently swapped over Fowlin from being a Worgen to a Torrin because they announced Time Mountain Torrin. It took me a while. I didn't want to give up on my Worgen. I love Worgen a great deal. I wrote a backstory for this character, but I didn't want to give it up. Eventually, they announced High Mountain Torrin, and I'm like, okay. I, I want to play with these guys. I'm going to miss my Worgen, but fuck it. I realm changed. I race changed. I'm now a Torrin. Um, waiting to race change again into a High Mountain Torrin, and I'm playing with my the character I care the most about again. But... Not only that is, we got back a lot of the guys from moving to Mongolia recently. A lot of them are coming back now. A lot of them are playing back. And we have this such a good core of people who are just really fun to play with. Some of them are very fucking good in the game. In fact, um, some of our members used to be um, freaking high tier raiders and mythic raiders. Um, so, yeah, but they just want to do casual stuff at this point or, you know, normal heroic just for the fun of it. They don't want to put that much work into it because raiding that high tier is a lot of work. It's a lot of de dedication and it must get tiring. But we've got a lot of good people. People that are most importantly fun to play with. And we've got a new recruit recently we call Moo, who has very quickly become one of my best and closest friends. I met him this year. And he has very, very quickly become one of my best and closest friends. That never happens for me. Um, it takes a long time for me to consider somebody like that. And let's just say that I've gone through some shit this year. To the point where I've been more depressed than I have ever been in my life. To the point where I thought about doing things that I scared myself because I've never been that bad before. Um, I'm not going into more details than that. You could probably assume what I'm talking about. And he's helped me out a lot. As has another guildie. Um, that I... She was in our previous guild, but we got talking more in Burly Functional because, you know, there was only a few of us. And we've become pretty close as well. Um, and honestly, all this is to say that World of Warcraft Legion has to be my game of the year, man. Um, this is, this is more than just a game for me at this point. This is, this is a place where I hang around with some very, very good friends of mine. Where I play a game I love with some great, great people who I love playing it with. And quite frankly, meeting these guys is probably 
one of the best things that has ever happened to me in gaming. Uh, this kind of thing is why gaming is so good. It really is. It's the great equalizer. It doesn't matter who you are, what your beliefs are, what your skin color is, where you're from, whatever. Gaming is where people get together and we co cooperate and we shit talk each other and we just have fun. Um, and no other game emphasizes that and freaking symbolizes that to me more than World of Warcraft. I have completely fallen in love with this game all over again. And I am so excited for Battle for Azeroth. Going into this new expansion with this guild. A guild whose name I love and whose people I really freaking... Yeah. I Fuck it. Whose people, whose people in it I freaking love. I, that is why WoW has to be my game of the year. Problem is, WoW was a game that came out in like, what, 2004? And I can't even say Legion because that came out that last year. But there's there's no other game that could possibly have that impact for me. WoW is all I've really played all year long. There's nothing else that's come up to replace it. I've enjoyed myself with other games. Uh, I've delved into others a little bit. Um, a friend of mine bought a game called Maze for me randomly on Steam. And as payment, as kind of... A thank you for uh, to him. Uh, I let's played it for him because he enjoys my YouTube content a lot. So the let's play of Maze on my YouTube channel, you can find it here. Um, that's just for him. That's that was made for him as a thank you, and it was a blast. Maze, I think again that came out in two thousand sixteen. Maze is one of the best games I've ever played. It's so fucking funny. It's got such brilliant um, British humor. It's a puzzle game, but it's a really brain-dead simple puzzle game um, that, you know, if, if I could figure out, anyone could, but you play it because the writing is so funny. The characters and the voice actings are so funny. It's a short game, but it's such an enjoyable experience. I cannot recommend Maze enough. Um, so, yeah, uh, and thank you very much, my friend, for buying that for me. Um... I played Mass Effect 3 for the first time this year, and that was really good, which is more than I can say for Andromeda. Andromeda was more than, I was the, the issues with Andromeda was more than just shitty coding and bugs and all that. RPGs have bugs, I mean the level of bugs in that game was in, inexcusable, but yeah, it was the fact that it felt rushed, it felt lazy, there was no, there was no meat in it. And a lot of the stuff we did in Mass Effect no longer applies. Uh, it was wiped clean. And then they've got to the point where like, oh, the reception was so bad, they're like, oh, we're not gonna make another one for a while. What's the point in playing it? What's the point in even playing this one and thinking, okay, they may get the next one better? Andromeda was a disaster. But Mass Effect 1? Fantastic game. The UI is shit, but a fantastic game. Mass Effect 2, one of the best RPGs out there, with some of the best and most memorable characters you will ever find in a video game. Like, fucking Mass Effect 2 was, I think, the last time Bioware felt like Bioware. Like, Bioware, I, I love. Like, Neverwinter Nights is my favorite game of all time. And that is Bioware, and a lot of that was due to characters like Deacon Scale Singer, or Slinger, um, you know, and the various interactions of the characters in Neverwinter Nights. Um, a lot of my favorite games, Knights of the Old Republic, Bioware, again, amazing characters, uh, really cool like RPG mechanics and whatnot, very enjoyable. Dragon Age Origins, one of my all-time favorite games, just incredible game that I've repeatedly played over and over again. Bioware games have, for the long time, been incredible. And they've just lost that over the years. And Andromeda is just awful. So yeah. So what... What does this all come to saying? Well, I can't do a top five of the game... Uh, top five games of the year this year. And nor... Do I really have a game of the year this year? Because my only options for games that I can choose are two freaking heavily flawed games that I don't want to put as game of the year. 
although it does lean more towards Persona. But they're too heavily flawed for me to count as game of the year. Um, it'll be like putting Fallout on the list. And I remember Fallout was a very, I think it was Fallout 4, was a very, very good game. It was a shit Fallout game and it was a abysmal RPG, but it was a very good game. I couldn't put it on my list because of all the issues I had with it. <laughs> Mario Odyssey is very, very good. Fucking, but it's forgettable. It's just, it's... It's good, but it's it's generic good, you know. Um, and then what else? Like, like I've got more games here. Fucking Mario Kart Deluxe Eight, and really like one of the freaking incredible game. Fucking Pokemon Tournament, incredible game. Wait, I've heard about those games before. Oh yeah, they're ports from the Wii U. Never mind, they don't count. Like there has been a lot of good games this year. Uh, well, say a lot. There's been a few good games this year, but. Everyone that like that could possibly win game of the year, I didn't actually finish. Um, and the closest to that to me would be Neo, which is incredible, and Monster Hunter Stories. They're both fantastic games that I could not recommend high highly enough, like high enough. They're incredible, but I never finished them, so they go out of my rules. So if you if if you need to choose a game of the year for me this year. Well, it's Nio or Monster Hunter um, stories. Neo Nio, how do you pronounce it? Um, uh, and freaking Nier and uh, Automata, I never played. I'm a big fan of Dragon God. I fucking love Dragon God, but I've never played the Neo games. Nier, Nier, Automata, whatever. Neo and Nier, the same fucking year. Oh god, I rhymed. Oh, fear, fear. That was forces all fuck. But ultimately, the game of the year for me, outside of those rules, it's WoW. It's a really good game. WoW contains one of the best video game worlds. Like, fuck, WoW contains one of the best created worlds and lores ever to ever exist. WoW is incredible. Um, and But the main reason, like, World of Warcraft means so much to me right now, is because of the people I've met in it. It's the people I play the game with. Um, it's the guild I'm in. Burly Functional um, is... Yeah. <laughs> we are Burly Functional and we will never quit. We'll laugh and tease our hearts out while others throw, others throw a fit. <laughs> I came up with that one day after we had some drama. I'm 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 awkward. I'm weird. I'm, I'm, I'm being very... Yeah. It's it's the emotional feels, dude. It's it's making me uncomfortable. But <laughs> so yes, this has been a very long and randomly video. I know one person who will have watched this all the way through. Uh, you are the best, my burr friend. Thank you very much. Not to be confu confused with the burly functional burr. One of the burly functional burrs, but the other burr who I knew before the burly functional burrs. You're the only guy that's probably got all the way all this way through, so. Fingers crossed for me, and I hope you especially. And everyone else that's got up to this point has a very good 2018. Um, but yeah. So officially, my game of the year for 2017, it's got to be World of Warcraft. There's there's no other option. If you're going to have to choose a game that came out this year, well, take your pick between Neo, Nio, ne ah, and Monster Hunter Stories. Speaking of Monster Hunter, I think I know what my game this year is already going to be. In a few weeks' time, Monster Hunter World is coming out on console. And then later on down the line, I think in January, it's coming out on PC. Um, I played the beta. I have issues with the controls, and the frame rate's not exactly great. But that could be fixed on the PC version. But words cannot describe how much I am excited for this game. This is a Monster Hunter Grant game I have dreamed about. We very rarely get our dream games. A Monster Hunter that looks this good, but still retains the Monster Hunter feel and process, is a dream game of mine. And I cannot wait to play it. So chances are that's already going to be my game of the year. In the first month of 2018. Which gives me a long time to really think about it. And iron out any criticisms I could possibly have. Because, let's face it, I'm a fanboy when it comes to that series, so I could overlook more than I really should, but given the fact that I've got all year to think about it, 
I should have a fur review at the end of the year, or rather, fur opinions. But anyway, this has been Fallen Hawk, giving you much needed gamegasm. Hope you have a good year. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.